Hi, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy in the News. Let me again say uh, to those of you who've been praying for my recovery over the past few weeks, thanks very much. I appreciate it more than you know. Once again, as promised, on this Thursday, we have Avi Lipkin as our guest. And Avi, of course, is the author of these six books, which we have featured at Prophecy in the News over the years. But we're offering them now as a package for you together. And we're calling it the Avi Lipkin Middle East Package. I think it's more relevant than ever, in particular uh, to those of you who have not experienced Avi's teaching, his writing, his observations about what's going on in the Middle East. Avi, welcome back once again. Special pleasure and honor to see you and to be with you on the, in front of the camera. We're going to continue the conversations we've been having on these daily updates. And uh, Avi, the fascinating thing about uh, talking with you is that you bring the Israeli perspective. Uh, I, you, re you were raised in America, but and you're a, a man of the world, you've traveled a lot, you speak a number of languages, you have a experience, but you also have an eye for what's going on in the Middle East, and particularly, what I think the most important uh, development in the world today, and that is the, this massive drive uh, by the Islamic community to dominate the world. And, and you give us a great perspective on that. I think most important of all is that I have a wife. <laughs> My wife, Rachel, is an intelligence gatherer for the Israeli government. She was born and raised in Cairo, Egypt for the first 20 years of her life. She understands them. She understands their language. She understands their convictions and their intentions. Mm -hmm. And so just for example, my very first book is Fanatic Islam, A Global Threat. This came out for the first time in 1995, and uh, it was reprinted in five editions. Uh, and that became a 300-page book by 1997. And so up until 1997, I talked five times in this book about the destruction of the World Trade Center in New York City. 1997, that's four years before 9-11. Wow. And so people were saying, this obviously is crazy, and the Arabs would never attack. And when it happened, Avi's a prophet. I said, I'm not a prophet. I listened to my wife. <laughs> You got to listen to your wife. <clears throat> she listens to them. My wife listens to them. And in Arabic, they were saying, we're going to take the American planes. We're going to crash them into the World Trade Center because that's the way to destroy America. By the way, the World Trade Center was not just two buildings. It was a symbol yeah. of something very big. It was a symbol of world trade. Get yes. that, everybody? In other words, it was the symbol of global capitalism, which is the target of the, the Muslim East. Right. Now, I divide Islam into revolutionary and evolutionary. Who are the revolutionaries? The revolutionaries are the people who hijack the planes and want to destroy the American economy because their contention is Christianity controls the earth and defeats Islam because Christianity has the economy. Christianity has the world commerce, the world trade. Mm -hmm. The way to destroy Christianity is to hijack the planes, destroy the World Trade Center, and most important of all, deny them the oil. And Ahmadinejad, who I think is going to fall from power pretty soon, Ahmadinejad did a doctoral thesis that the way to destroy America is $150 a barrel. And what happened in 2007, 2008? $147 a barrel. So Islam is now divided into two. You've got those who want to charge exorbitant prices, and we're hovering around $100 a barrel now, which is crazy, because it costs $20, $30 to produce a barrel. So it's all speculation and ripping off the American population. And I do believe that the Ahmadinejad Khamenei uh, regime, Ayatollah regime, will fall, is because this Shiite system is saying, we've got to destroy America. America cannot be repaired. America has to be destroyed. The way to destroy America is to destroy the world economy. Now, who's against that? The one world government. The one world government lives to serve mammon. And the mammon is the oil, the mammon is the economy. Okay. My wife, Rachel, picks up broadcasts for the last 30 years. 
One of the first broad- Can I ask yeah. you a quick question? Yeah. She picks up broadcasting. Uh, now, Avi's wife is charged with monitoring Arabic broadcasts. Radio, TV, computers, and newspapers. And I was going to ask what it is she listens to. Uh, talk radio, radio talk station? Talk radio, TV shows. She's watching everything they're saying, listening to everything they're saying. It's, it's basically a team of about 10 people who are working shifts. And 30 years ago, when she started working, she was picking up broadcasts that sounded really crazy. They were saying, even if it takes us 150 years, we're gonna make America a Muslim country. And she didn't understand it. And now, 30 years later, you know what they're saying? We thought it was gonna take us 150 years to Islamicize America, but we see America as a piece of cake. We're gonna make America a Muslim country within 30 years, not 150 years. Wow. Okay, and so the purpose of this short broadcast that we're doing now is to say, and I talk about it in my second book, Christian Revival for Israel's Survival, that they are doing it not by revolutionary Islam to destroy America, no. The king of Saudi Arabia and Qatar and these countries says, no, we're going to use our oil, we're going to use our money to buy out America. We're not going to destroy America, at least not physically. We're going to destroy it spiritually. We will make America the greatest... Muslim country on earth instead of the greatest Christian country on earth. And they're doing it incrementally through manipulation of oil prices, oil supplies, and of course the invasion. America is being invaded. And a lot of this, and I explain it in this book, is through the universities. Universities are given tens of millions of dollars, 20, 30 million every time, in order to create an Arabic language chair, create an Islamic studies chair, then they send their professors who are basically Muslim missionaries. Then they send 500 students a year to that college. By the end of four years, you have 500 freshmen, 500 sophomores, 500 juniors, 500 seniors. So you got 2,000 guys in this university now who are living there, paying full board, room board and tuition. Then they marry American girls, Christian, Jewish, atheist, whatever. According to Islam, the children of the intermarriage are Muslim because the fathers are Muslim. And so what you're really talking about then is a very large, widespread, across-the-board kind of, a, of an Islamic movement that is undetectable through Western eyes. We just fail to see this, th that's the thing that you're talking about. The correct word is stealth. 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 And they come in with student visas to the universities. They marry American girls. Within two years, they have American passports then the growth is exponential because they can bring in their parents and their brothers and sisters and cousins and uncles. And then the women that they marry become Islamic baby factories for Allah. Now the bottom line, and I'm speaking here as a, uh, as a student of Bible prophecy and a Bible-believing Christian, is that we've read the end of the book and we know what's going to happen. And we know who is victorious and we know that our Lord and the Lord God stands for his people and, and has for thousands of years and will continue to. And so I don't think we have to be afraid when we hear words like this. But on the other hand, we need to know what's happening. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hmm. And so our, my job is not about faith. My job is about knowledge, which will strengthen people's faith. Very interesting. Avi has written six books, and I wanted to tell you about them again today. Uh, these six books represent his thinking over how many years now? Well, the last 23 years that I've been preaching in churches, but I'm 64, and this is basically the summation of my entire life, 64 years of my life. Is fanatic Islam a global threat? Christian revival for Israel's survival. And by the way, do we ever need Christian revival? And, and I think revival is taking place right now at the grassroots level. It's beginning. People, it, it is beginning. People who are watching prophecy in the news, uh, sharing with their friends, and saying, wait a minute, there may be something to this Bible thing after all. It's more than simply a good book, quote unquote. It's actually a book of, uh, well, let's call it the operator's manual for planet Earth. It tells everything about the past, the present, and the future, and you need to know about it. Uh, Islamic Threat Update is the name of that one. Israel's Bible Block, uh, featuring Avi's thoughts concerning a party that would, be, would have a representative seat in the Knesset. 
and uh, it would represent uh, Jews and Christians. Bible-believing individuals having a voice in the Knesset. What a wonderful thought. Return to Mecca, a book on prophecy. Mecca is, of course, the, uh, the place of pilgrimage for Arabs, but it, do you know it has Jewish roots? You'll be amazed. Islam, prophesied in Genesis. These six books we're offering under the general title of the Avi uh, Lipkin Middle East Package, $75 plus shipping and handling. And we have three bonus DVDs. If you, if you uh, buy the package, we have three Avi Lipkin DVDs. The first one, uh, an interview with Derek Gilbert. The second one, uh, Islamic, America's Islamic Future, a, a longer version of what you've been hearing Avi talk about the last few minutes, and uh, the future of Israeli politics. These three VD DVDs, yours absolutely free when you order the six books of the Avi Lipkin Middle East package. And if you uh, call on the 800 number, be sure you ask for it by that name because they'll know what you're talking about. Always fascinating, Avi, and, and and I am a bit taken aback. I'm sitting here and I'm saying, wow, my, my country, my, my wonderful America. Christian America. Christian America. And I'm thinking, are we going to lose it? Is it going to slip away? What's going to happen? Well, uh, listen, people need to know about this. These are the last days. Israel became a state in 1948. It's been decades ago. Israel's going to have its 70th birthday here one of these days soon. And uh, I believe that the days of Israel are numbered as the days of a man. And when you hit 70, you've had your three score and 10, and uh, it's time for you to move to the next level. One of these days, I think is Israel is going to move to the next level, and it might not be too far in the future. Avi, thanks for being with us today. God bless you, and God bless America. God bless you all, and thanks for your prayers. We are living in truly significant days. So, remember, keep looking up. He's coming.